What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here. Delarose.com. That's D-E-L-A-R-R-O-Z.com. I am a number one best-selling author and comic creator myself. You can get my books on Amazon. I've got both the link to my newsletter and my comics page on Amazon on the description below. So please check that out. Support the channel. All right. This is the complete Witchblade Volume 1. I uh, backed this on a Kickstarter from Top Cow Comics. And I was a little, you know, hesitant on this because I was like, hmm, is this actually going to be something good that holds up over time? And uh, I actually backed for two volumes here. And uh, I uh, I was pleasantly surprised by this offering here. It's a nice hardcover. Got a dust jacket on it, as you can see here with the volume one. It's labeled the complete collection. And I really hope they go uh, and actually do a complete collection with this. The inside of the art looks like a different cover. I think this this uh, dust jacket is a Kickstarter exclusive, uh, as I recall. And it covers uh, the Witchblade uh, 1 to 19. It's got a crossover with the darkness uh, towards the end of it. And it has four issues of a book called Tales of the Witchblade, which was a little side comic they had back in time. And the awesome cool part about the Kickstarter was Mark Silvestri signed all of these. Now, um, t there was an omnibus or compendium version of Witchblade where they were uh, they did two volumes of that uh, back in like 2010 or something like that. Those comprise of issues 1 to 50 and then uh, 51 to 100. As I recall, I think the original Witchblade run went 180 some odd issues. And uh, so they didn't actually complete the story. So I, I really hope these complete collections continue and actually do complete the story. That would be very nice uh, to have. Uh, that'd be a good thing. Uh, so that's what I'm hoping for. Those also did not include those Tales of the Witchblade backup stories, and I thought those were really great. Those, um, the, the concept of the Witchblade is it's this artifact that, like, you know, transfers from girl to girl over generations. It's like this gauntlet thing here, and it kind of is this, like, alien living thing on top of things. We'll get into the art in just a second. And uh, most of the art in this book is actually done by Michael Turner, which is really a treat. Michael Turner is one of my favorite artists. He unfortunately passed a little too young. Um, and it starts out, there's this guy, like he's this like evil corporate dude and he's like hunting the Witchblade. One thing I hate about 90s art um, is they loved to do this like sideways double page spread thing. Of course, they're showing uh, uh, Sarah Pizzini, who is uh, the Witchblade later. Uh, and she's, you know, basically pretending to be a hooker in order to infiltrate things. She's a cop in the storyline. Eventually, her partner dies uh, in a big shootout, and this Witchblade, this guy's trying to get it. He's got a, uh, a kind of uh, ninja sort of guy working for him uh, who he's trying to have work with it. And he knows that, like, uh, the Witchblade actually will only attach to women because of what he uh, has experienced, where a lot of people got their hands chopped off by this thing. So she, this thing bonds with Sarah. And uh, she ends up in a, a series of different fights over this while this guy tries to basically control her. Look at this art, just freaking fantastic. Now, the story, um, the writing is a little bit on the like 90s, dark, edgy, cheesy side. And of course, there, you can see there's a lot of cheesecake shots, which is, you know, which is fine. That's Michael Turner's kind of MO. You get these nice <laughs> full page spreads where, where she's just looking hot. A um, little prelude to Fathom here, maybe. And, uh, she goes through a series of fights over the first deal uh, where uh, she's got kind of just learning to use the witch blade. There's a side story where basically she's watching this gal and like raising her uh, young. And this gal is like going into this like creepy modeling thing where it's really just like a, a cult where they're, they seem to be enslaving these girls. Yeah, more cheesecake. You'll get lots of cheesecake over the course of this. And uh, that, that takes place in the second storyline where, where uh, that really ramps up and Sarah chases after these girls. There's a mystery too. Her father died a long time ago. Uh, Sarah is it, that is. And you can see this guy tried to get the witch blade on and failed. She eventually ends up killing the bad guy. But um, her father was embro embroiled in this mystery and you know there's these other ancient beings there's also this like yakuza versus like shook or versus um italian mafia gang war brewing so there's like three storylines really over the course of all of this and the darkness uh shows up in that like gang war thing towards the end <clears throat> and uh here we go here's the here's kind of the gal who's uh who's in charge of like the modeling 
deal. So each each storyline really lasts about six issues over the course of this, and and it does set up the next storyline pretty well through this. It's it's like you got that standard like comics flair where um you know you got you got like a couple pages of the next storyline kind of like getting in the middle of this. Now eventually Sarah gets recruited by like the FBI, um, and she gets sent like down to South America to deal with some stuff. That's kind of a funky storyline uh, and didn't quite work out as well as the first couple. Um, and then there's Tales of the Witchblade. And Tales of the Witchblade, each one of these is very different. Different artist, different writer. Um, and they just go from the past and the future of the Witchblade. So you get like a cyberpunk one uh, for a bit. You get like a pirate one, which is kind of fun. Uh, and so you get some neat stuff out of that. I really enjoyed these a lot. Um, Warren Ellis actually wrote the cyberpunky one. Now there is one uh, caveat I got to add, which is kind of annoying about this volume. The, the final Tales of the Witchblade storyline uh has a to be continued and so it continues in volume two which is great if you have volume two but i really feel like they should have in the collected edition put that in the same volume as this just so it finishes off it doesn't feel right leaving that for the next volume and starting off the next volume there um <clears throat> yeah this is uh this is sarah as a secret agent towards the end of this and uh there we go Some very interesting, cool stuff there. I like the darkness crossover. That's where <clears throat> that's where it, uh, this volume ends for the main storyline, where she uh, she ends up having to team up with him to fight an evil, which is trying to show up when the two darkness and the witchblade come together, and if they come together, bad stuff happens. And uh, they eventually fight it off, of course, after fighting each other, because that's how comics work. Really cool stuff. Um, I'd say, like I said, the dialogue's a little, like, dark and edgy at points uh, where it doesn't necessarily work out the best. Um, you know, could use a little refining for modern times, perhaps. But um, overall, these were pretty fun, action-packed stories. I like at the back, you get these, you get all the credits of each issue at the back. Um, so you can kind of go through very easily and just see who did what. Uh, and, you know, what's awesome is, is again, Michael Turner pretty much did all the Witchblade stuff all the way through this volume. So you get kind of the best art ever <laughs> out of this. Um, really fun. I enjoyed this. Uh, I'll, I'll call this overall an 8 out of 10. Um, I'm looking forward to the next volume. Now, I did read Witchblade uh, later on, and Ron Mars actually takes over Rich Witchblade later as a writer, and uh, it, it becomes very interesting at that point. So I hope they do collect his whole run uh, through this deal. I would like this complete collection to actually be a full complete collection. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, and then you can run through this whole series. As it stands, uh, Volume 1 is, is pretty great. It's it's very heavy. I think it's like 500 pages. So definitely worth the while, especially if you are interested in checking out 90s comics. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.